All right. Well, I think most of us are here, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. Uh, but good morning. Thank you for being here today. Thanks for coming. My name is Billy Hackett, and this is the third uh, third part of our webinar series. And today I'm going to be trying to help you increase your goose IQ. Uh, my philosophy is the more you know about geese, the more effective and efficient your goose control programs will be. And uh, in return, the more money that you can make. Um, I do have your microphones muted right now. I will unmute them at the end when there's uh, so there's time for some questions. But uh, until we get there, let's learn about some geese. Uh, Canada geese are primarily herbivores and they prefer to eat green vegetation like grasses, aquatic plants and weeds. Uh, geese are among the most recognizable of the bird species. They average uh, anywhere from 10 to 13 pounds and they have a relatively long lifespan of about 10 to 25 years. They are native to North America and people generally think of geese as being migratory, but that is wrong, that has changed. Uh, almost all geese now are residential and they will stay in the same place all year round. Uh, they can be found in all 50 states. Some obviously have a worse problem than others. Um, and at one point, Canada geese were largely thought to have gone extinct because there hadn't been a sighting in a long period of time. However, there was a small flock discovered in Minnesota, which was taken to a wildlife research center. Uh, and they were entered into a Canada goose production restoration program where they began breeding the geese. Uh, the program involved a bunch of different resources and agencies. But 18 years later, uh, there were 6,000 successful uh, Canada geese that were breed or bred. Uh, those 6,000 geese were released to 83 sites across the country, um, and those 6,000 geese multiplied very quickly. Uh, today, 37 years later, there's an estimated 8 million Canada geese in the United States alone and about 14 million geese in North America. So in a span of roughly 50 years, the goose population went from one lonely flock in Minnesota uh, to roughly 14 million geese in North America. Uh, one of the biggest reasons for the explosion in the uh, in our population is that geese are federally protected under the Migratory Bird Act. And under this law, it's illegal to pursue, hunt, take, capture, or kill geese without a federal permit or a waiver. You can face some steep fines if you, if you try to. Um, residential geese begin, begin nesting in their second year. Um, geese are very loyal and they will stay with the same mate for life. They lay their eggs anywhere from March until late April, and the average nest is about five to six eggs, um, sometimes as few as 10, sometimes, I'm sorry, sometimes as few as two, sometimes as many as 10 eggs. Um, parents are incredibly protective and they will fiercely protect their nest. They'll attack basically any animal trying to uh, get into its territory and that includes its own natural predators and they'll even try to attack humans if they feel threatened. But almost all reports of geese attacks happen on Geese attacks on people happen during the nesting stage and before the goslings are able to fly and uh, defend or get away for themselves. The goslings won't leave their parents' side until the spring of the next year, and the parents will not abandon their, their nest or goslings under any circumstance, um, which is why during certain times of the year, it's impossible. It's, it's pretty much impossible to get rid of geese on a property once they've nested. It's very important to know that all offspring try to return to their place of birth and this is because they want to breed and nest in the same place where they were born. And this is one of the several factors on how a small flock can turn into a real nightmare in just a, in just a short amount of time. Um, adult geese go into molt. That's a period where they lose their flight feathers and it's usually about eight weeks from when their goslings are born. Uh, the picture here shows a typical um, flock of geese that are, are in molt. It's usually pretty unappealing. There's feathers all over the place and the geese just kind of loaf around. They are completely flightless at this time, and they are um, they have to get to wherever they want to go from walking. It's all they can do. Um, as a goose control provider, this is when you, you might be getting a lot of your calls for geese because geese typically pick about um, seven to ten different sites to feed at throughout the day. But that's when they can fly. During molt, when they can only walk, they typically just pick a few. So they're more apparent to people. People see them hanging out for um, longer periods of time in the same place. Uh, it's very, very important to be able to recognize molt and when you see the feathers on the ground and what time of year it is, because you can completely change your uh, or alter your goose control strategy during molt because they can't fly. We'll talk about it later on in the presentation, but um, but it's important to be able to recognize molt. It usually lasts about six weeks and um, they almost always congregate near lakes and ponds, quick to close to a water source. Here's some of just the major common problems that uh, that geese can cause. Uh, first one is noise. They make a lot of noise. A flock can honk and uh, can be pretty annoying. They do actually cause a lot of car collisions, and typically it's during molt when the goslings are young and they can't fly. Um, they're forced to walk everywhere, which means that they have no problem walking across a road to uh, get to wherever they're trying to get to, um, which can really irritate some motorists. 
Um, they do cause agricultural damage. So in addition to their usual diet of grass, they've been known to destroy cop crops like wheat, um, corn, rice, and even soybeans. They can transmit disease, um, not only from their feces, but they can transmit it by touch and biting, uh, just as uh, any animal could transmit to a human. Again, goose attacks, they can be pretty savage, especially during the summer months when they're protecting their young. Um, geese can completely destroy a property. Uh, one goose will eat up to three pounds of grass in one day, um, and they prefer to eat the, the healthiest of the grass, which oftentimes allows for the weeds and other unwanted vegetation to prosper uh, because it doesn't have the healthy grass to com compete with it. Geese are um, directly attributable, or poor water quality can directly be attributed to geese. Um, algae and other water issues um, can be caused by their feces, and it's not uncommon to hear about public lakes or beaches closing to dangerous levels of coliform in the water, which can come from a, a, a large flock of geese being in there. Uh, in addition to the eating the grass, they can cause property damage. When they eat the grass all the way down to the roots, it can lead to erosion since they're often eating on water banks. And the biggest and most common complaint about that people have with geese is, is their poop, as I'm sure you know. Uh, one goose will poop up to three pounds in just one day. Uh, the feces can be slippery and can potentially lead to slips and falls or even lawsuits in certain places of businesses if people are found to be negligent and not cleaning up the, the problem. Goose feces are known and proven to contain bacteria and parasites that can transmit disease. Um, they can be passed along to humans oftentimes without the human even knowing it. And the severity can uh, be as little as a, a cold-like symptoms to the severity of violent, violently ill or flu-like symptoms, depending on the person and how strong their immune system is. But the obvious thing is goose droppings are unsightly, unsanitary, and, and uh, just plain gross. Here's just some of the common parasites and bacteria that can be found in goose feces. Um, most of these I cannot pronounce, and I'm not going to try to um, embarrass myself by doing it. But um, the most common are E. coli and salmonella. Um, and Listeria is very deadly. Um, it's not very common, but it has been found in goose feces and can be very deadly. So here's another problem that's caused by human and goose interaction, but this time it's for the humans causing problems for the geese, and it is called angel wing. Um, angel wing is a condition that waterfowl get, mainly ducks and geese. And it's uh, you can see the pictures on the left there are, is basically what a goose with angel wing looks like. And it's where the uh, the last joint of the wing is twisted and the wing feathers point out laterally instead of instead of being able to fit snugly across their body. Um, typically, if someone saw a goose like this, they would think that a fox got it or it was attacked by something. Um, but angel wing is a condition that is uh, directly caused by geese eating food that is high in protein and carbohydrates and calories. Um, things basically from humans feeding geese. Um, they're eating things that they're not genetically engineered to eat. And it. Basically, in adults, it's, it's incurable and it renders them flightless. Um, so they're susceptible to, to attacks from the predators because they can't get away. They can't fly at all. Um, so if you are doing a program of flight control and you happen to see people feeding their geese, flight control is one of the things that takes away their food source. But if they are getting food from an outside source like people, um, be sure to warn them that you're um, that they shouldn't be feeding the geese, even if they think it's cute and they're um, doing the goose, goose a favor by giving it some food, they're actually setting it up for a death sentence. And it'll also make your flight control applications less effective if, if the geese are getting food from another source. So can the geese have become a huge problem? Uh, they cause serious concerns for many types of people. There is a huge demand to humanely and effectively control geese, and demand's only gonna continue to increase as does their uh, population. So let's talk about why the geese choose the sites that they choose to hang out on. And uh, here are some of the biggest factors is that they prefer the young, succulent, and healthy grass areas. Uh, so the more healthy the grass, the more that they want to be there, they want to eat that grass. They roost and feed where they feel the safest. And typically this is near lakes and ponds or other types of water sources. Um, and also in large fields where they can see unobstructed and a long way into the distance, they can see if uh, predators are coming at them or any threats are coming at them. Um, they, they like to feed where they see other geese feeding. So it's common to see a flock flying overhead. They'll see a flock on the ground and they might swoop in just to see what's so, uh, so appealing down there. Uh, but one of the other reasons why, um, why goose, geese have chosen where they are is that people have created uh, ideal environments for them to thrive. Um, they have, since they're such an adaptable species, they have found safety in suburban and even urban areas. And this is away from their natural predators and where people can't hunt them. Um, they love retention ponds, which are often found around new construction areas, and they love the healthy grass, again, that a lot of people are paying good money to have. And the bottom line is once the geese have selected a place where they feel safe and there's good food, it is very hard to get them to actually leave the property. 
So to be able to properly manage the geese, it's important to understand their behavior as, as we've been talking about. Again, geese are selecting a site based on two things, and that is food and safety. These are the two most important things to a goose, uh, having good food and feeling safe. But a goose's behavior can be temporarily changed uh, by introducing a threat or a warning. However, the, the geese will quickly adapt to any threat that doesn't have a consequence. So therefore, the only way to effectively change a goose's behavior is to introduce a threat with a consequence or to take away their food. Uh, flight control is, is a product that is able to accomplish both of these things, and that's what makes it so effective. So just to recap for some of you who may not be as familiar with flight control as others uh, and in how it works and why it's effective, it works in two ways. And the first way that it works is the visual warning. And unlike us, all birds can see in a UV spectrum. Um, they can basically, they can see it when you apply it to the turf, they can see it on the grass. They can tell the difference between turf treated with flight control and turf that is untreated. Uh, you can see on the bottom right that there's uh, how the grass appears to the geese. It appears in a purpley type color and they can see the speckles of the product on the turf. Um, and uh, the top picture is it looks normal to us. Um, and the second way that it works is the anti-feeding warning. Um, once they eat that turf treated with flight control, they experience a strong but harmless digestive irritation. It will be similar to what we think of as getting heartburn or indigestion after a meal. Um, but they quickly learn, it only takes them one time, but they quickly learn not to feed on that weird looking grass. So flight control is the most effective goose control product because it gives a threat with a consequence. There is the visual threat of seeing it on the grass and the digestive consequence of eating it, which causes a learned behavior modification. So we're gonna talk a little bit about other ways or other methods that can be successful um, in, in trying to work on a goose control program for you. Some of these are successful, some are not successful. Uh, but one of the most common things of trying to get rid of geese off property is harassment. And this can be things like uh, pyrotechnics, like fireworks or uh, noisemakers, motorized boats, drones, lasers, um, things, things like that. Um, all of these things will definitely scare geese away. They will for sure scare a flock of geese off your property, but it's, but they will only come right back once they realize there's no threat. And unless you have all, all day long to be outside and driving a, a remote control device around the geese, uh, they're going to come right back as soon as they realize that the threat's not there or the threat leaves. Um, there's dogs, which are very common. Um, dogs, dogs are usually trained border collies. The geese are scared of the dogs. So this will definitely get the geese to fly away from the property. Um, but again, the dogs need to make several daily trips to be effective because um, the geese will come right back once they realize the dogs have left. Um, and in fact, there's many dog uh, border collie companies that are actually using flight control as a supplement to their um, to their program already. It, it allows them to come to the property less frequently. And it is, is especially helpful on larger properties um, where it's not feasible to actually apply flight control to the entire property, but they can apply it to certain areas where the geese are feeding, the dogs can come in and uh, scare them out altogether. So in, used in conjunction, it can be very, uh, uh, it can be effective. There are other types of repellents. Um, however, they don't work very well. Um, the way that they work or try to work is they put off a, an odor that is very repulsive for the geese, but the problem is it's repulsive for the humans as well. Um, they wash off and it doesn't uh, last very long, usually only a couple days. So it's not a very effective method of trying to repel the geese. Um, something else that we're going to talk about that is very effective is habitat modification. And this is a great control method to be used in conjunction with Flight Control Plus, especially during the right time of year. It's uh, cheap and simple to do. Habitat modification involves using things like fencing or lines or wires. Um, you can install temporary fixtures and they can have a huge impact on geese, especially during uh, during molt. So for that six week period during molt, six to seven weeks of period during molt, you may be able to get away with keeping geese off a of property altogether just by installing some basic fencing, um, depending obviously where the area is, but you could get away with not even doing a flight control application because the geese, they can't fly, they have to walk everywhere and you could put up a three, three foot fence or so, the geese won't be able to get over. So again, depending on the time of year, habitat modifications can work extremely well at getting, uh, keeping geese off of a certain property. Uh, there are population controls, which I, if you're getting into the goose control business, I highly recommend looking into. Uh, population controls are things like hunting, which obviously is seasonal only and by permit, but egg addling is, is the more common and more uh, productive. Egg addling is, um, is where the mother goose's eggs are either oiled or punctured or, or shaken or some other means to prevent them from hatching. Um, puncturing the eggs with a nail or something is usually the most reliable um 
method of addling. It not only keeps more geese off of your property for that season, it'll prevent those average of five or six geese from being there later on in the, in the, in the summer and in the fall, but it'll also prevent those five or six goslings from coming back the year after to try to start their own families. So egg addling can be very, very effective at trying to curb the goose population and again, future populations. Um, you do need a license to addle eggs. You need to contact your local DNR to get that, but they are usually very happy to hand those out. Um, and finally, fake uh, fake decoys, threat predator decoys, like uh, dead goose decoys, fake owls or coyotes, stuff like that. Those things might work for a couple of days, but again, the geese will come right back when they realize there's no actual threat to them from having those decoys there. So there's a lot of methods to scare geese, things that give a threat, but there is no consequence. So the geese won't actually change their behavior. Um, there are many methods that control uh, to try to control geese, but Flight Control Plus is the only truly effective method at moving and repelling geese because unlike the other things, it delivers a strong threat with a strong consequence. Uh, by using flight control, you're taking away the goose's uh, food and safety, which are the goose's two basic needs. So here's a couple of uh, just tips or strategies for, uh, for controlling geese. There is no silver bullet technique that will work all the time and can be used everywhere. Uh, so depending on the timing, uh, the time of year, that the, your, your technique or your method is, it, Definitely depends on the timing of it or how successful it is depends on the timing of it. Uh, again, if you can prevent geese from nesting on the property, you're going to have way less bird pressure throughout the rest of the year um, and later on in the fall as well. When you are evaluating a site, uh, what you definitely want to try and do is identify what makes this particular site so, so appealing to the geese. And the best technique will reduce the attractiveness to the goose. So if it's the food they're looking for, you want to take, take away that food source. If it's safety, you want to try to take away that safety. Um, but introducing uh, two or more goose control techniques will, will give you the best results. So that would be flight control plus um, uh, using some fencing or habitat modifications or population controls. Those will definitely give you your best results. Um, and introducing quick fix gimmicks and techniques will only give you um, short term results. Almost never do they give you any kind of long term results. But hopefully you learned some useful info today about geese and can apply it towards your approach. To, to goose management in the upcoming season. I'm just going to open it up to any questions that you might have right now. I will unmute your microphones. If you have any questions, I think you can click that green button. I actually think it is to unmute yourself if you have any questions at this time. It's always quiet in the morning sessions. Um, but if you do have any questions, feel free to uh, contact me at any of, the, any of the places below, my office, my email. Um, I'd be happy to help you out if you have any specific questions about your company or things that you can do. I'd be happy to talk to you about it. Um, but again, thanks for your time today. I really appreciate it. Uh, be sure to check us out on social media if you haven't already. And uh, thanks again for your time. Merry Christmas to you. Have a good one. Thank you.